Hey everyone, in the news this week, Silvia Berlusconi passed away at the age of 86. I saw a notice saying rest in peace, and certainly the families of young Italian girls can now rest easy. Ted Kaczynski also passed away. He was the Unabomber who killed and injured dozens of people before being arrested in the 90s. It's not expected to be many people at the funeral because the invitations have been posted out, but people are understandably worried about opening the packages. And Nicola Sturgeon is still reeling from her visit from the police, leaving Hamza Yousaf as the only SNP First Minister to have not ever been arrested. There's sadly no punchline there, it's just both hilarious and astonishing really. But of course the main news story this week has been the ongoing saga surrounding Boris Johnson. I'm recording this on Father's Day and Boris is one of the few fathers who can teach his youngest kids numeracy by counting up all the various Father's Day cards from them all. He was forced to step down as an MP so he could spend more time cheating on his family, but much has been said about the hypocrisy of the whole situation. Keir Starmer also had a beer and colleagues get together, but nothing's been said about that for months. Then it turned out that Bernard Jenkin, a prominent member of the Privileges Committee that took down Boris, had also had an illegal drinks party at Westminster in December 2020, when London was in Tier 2 lockdown. It's certainly quite a clubby joins Catherine Calderwood, Dominic Cummings, Neil Ferguson, Margaret Ferrier, Matt Hancock, and don't forget about the people who are responsible for reporting on that lockdown, people like Kay Burley and Beth Rigby, who are also having parties. Maybe they should all just hang out together and have a big party next time a pandemic happens. Supposedly Boris's case is different though, because what he did that was really wrong was that he misled Parliament. How is that a thing? He's a politician after all, it's what they do. He's surely more likely to mislead people if he told the truth and people assumed that he'd been lying about it. Think back 20 years ago when Tony Blair and the whole cabinet went on about weapons of mass destruction in a 45 minute warning, with the exception of a few decent people like Robin Cook who resigned over the issue. Peter Mandelson was sacked three times back then for misleading Parliament. In fact, I think lying to people and misleading Parliament was one of the few things he was actually competent at. As I said, though, the facts matter less than the agenda, getting rid of Boris with the hope that they could maybe eventually convince the public to rejoin their beloved EU. Whatever Boris did was bad, and when Labour did the same, it was okay or it didn't matter. It's the same sort of hypocrisy that Labour have always had around climate change, for instance, where no matter what the government policy is, it's either wrong or it's not extreme enough. I mean, the Tories already did their best by closing down all the coal mines 40 years ago. Give them some slack. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.